Hey guys, this is Cole from MacKiteBoarding.com and this will be the second video in our Wing Foiling Basics playlist. So today we're going to go over your first session in the water. Now, there's a couple things that are different. We're not just going to throw you out in the water with your wing and your foil. Um, we're going to walk you through um, a good first step in the water. Going from land to water is a whole different animal. We're going to start you out in a controlled manner, a good step from the land into the water, keeping you guys safe, but also keeping you guys on track to become an avid wing foiler. Now for your first water session, um, you could do it anywhere. You could do it at a lake, you could do it on even a river, a beach or ocean. What's important is that you guys can do a long downwinder um, have the ability to either walk back up shore or have someone pick you up in a car. If you're on a sup, um, some of the wings, um, not the wasp here, but like the Nash wings have little attachment points for a paddle. So you guys could even go out on your paddle board um, with your wing, attach your paddle to the wing, go downwind and then paddle back upwind. As far as wind conditions go, we recommend going out on a pretty light day, about five to 10 knots. Um, nothing crazy, you don't wanna be overpowered um, all you need is just enough wind to start propelling you through the water. As far as the gear that I would recommend that you use for this video, um, the stand-up paddleboard with enough volume where you can stand up on it comfortably. And you could honestly use any wing size. For this video, um, I used a four meter wing. It's just big enough where I can get a, quite a bit of power out of it, even on light days. Now, if you guys have already foiled and are proficient on a kite, surfing, or on a boat, you can take your wing foiling board out with your foil on it um, and get right to trying to wing foil. Um, just get comfortable on that board because that's the board that you're going to be using in future sessions. For those of you who have not foiled before, um, I would recommend using a sup for your first water session. And it's crucial that before you go out on your wing foiling board with a foil, that you get behind the boat, learn how to foil, because if you don't know how to foil when you go out for your first wing foiling session, it's pretty challenging because you're already dealing with the wing, which is pretty new. Um, and it, it's almost impossible to learn how to wing foil if you don't already know how to foil. So if you guys checked out our last video where we just did some land-based drills that you can do basically anywhere to get comfortable with your wing, um, go check that video out before you keep watching this video. Um, because basically all the principles that we went over in that video is gonna apply to this video. Before you hit the water, there's a couple of things that you need to make sure that you have. So one, we always recommend having a flotation device on. For your wing, you always wanna have a wrist leash on um, or your waist leash, depending on what you prefer. But make sure you have something that attaches you to the wing in case you drop the wing. Another crucial thing is that you have a leash on your board. With kiteboarding, you can get back to your board. You can tack up wind or you can jibe down wind to get back to your board if you fall off it. With winging, it's really hard because when you're in the water, it's very challenging to get any power out of your wing, if any. So it's crucial that you have something connecting you to your board so when you fall off your board, you don't lose it. So now you're ready to hit the water. And the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is practice flipping over your wing. We went over it in the last video and on land, it's a lot easier to flip over your wing because the water isn't sucking your wing down. Um, there's water tension that occurs in the wing tips and it is much harder to break than the wing on dry land. So the first thing I want you to do is either kneel on your board, sit on your board um, and just practice flipping that wing over and over again. So when you do have your foil, um, rather than getting pulled downwind for a long period of time, you can just flip your wing over quick and you can start riding. So the next thing that I want you to practice is just getting to your knees, or if you're on a sup, you could stand, um, or go on your knees, depending on what board you have, or even, on, even sitting down on your board, and just practice switching your hands around um, on your handles here with the wing in a depowered state. So just practice balancing on your board with a depowered wing, switching your hands, um, this just gets you comfortable balancing on your board with a wing in your hands. Um, it seems kind of silly, uh, especially if you're on a sup because it has so much stability on it. But it's crucial that you know how to handle your wing while on a board because 
quite frankly, it is a little tricky to balance on your board with a wing. The wing's constantly pulling in different directions. Um, so it's, it's crucial that you get that down because it, it does make a difference. So just like we mentioned in the last video, um, we're gonna have you practice your water start. Now being on a bigger board like a SUP, it's much easier than a wing foiling board um, to get up on your knees and start riding without the fear of tipping over. While you're still on a board in the water, it forces you, you have to focus more so you don't tip over. But being on a SUP, it's much easier to balance than on a small wing foiling board. You're gonna be on your belly, you're gonna drag in that wing, you're gonna get it over your head, um, kinda like pull up, get to your knees, stand up, and start riding. Now this might take a little bit of practice to properly, to get the wing powered up properly, um, not yank yourself off the board. So once you're comfortable with getting up and riding and standing up with your wing powered up, all I want you to do is start riding downwind. Now this is gonna ensure that you're gonna be able to feel the power of the wing, um, but you're not gonna be leaning against it so you're gonna tip over. This is the best way to feel the power in the wing. Now once you're comfortable with this, you're gonna wanna start trying to turn. Now understand if you're on a SUP, it's gonna be, it's harder to turn a SUP just because of the sheer size of it, but you can still get a little bit of a turn in. Um, try tacking one way, try tacking the other way. If you're on a beach, try not to get too far away from shore. But once you get comfortable with tacking left and right, um, practice switching your feet. Um, you wanna be able to ride both ways. This is gonna ensure that when you're on your foil, you can, you can get up wind on both ways. You can only ride with just your left foot or just your right foot. Riding toe side uh, with a wing, very hard to get up wind aggressively. So it's important that in these early stages, you can ride with both feet forward. And with that, um, we're gonna talk about your transitions. So in the last video we talked about, you know, you can, you can practice your transitions on land by walking one way, switching your hands and walking the other way. With your SUP, obviously you're gonna take the walking out of the equation. So you're gonna be tacking in one direction, you're gonna switch your hands, and then you're gonna start turning the board so you start moving in the other direction. Almost the same movement as a foil. Obviously a foil is gonna be a little bit more touchy, but at least you'll start getting the feel for changing directions. So while you're, try, while you're getting up on your board, while you're going downwind, while you're doing your transitions, um, try to notice which, which handles do you like and dislike. Um, people find that there's a couple handles that they really enjoy and they feel that they have the most control out of the wing. Um, and other handles, they just don't feel like they have much control over the wing. So it's important that you find those handles that you, that you feel comfortable with. So when you get on your foil, you won't be dinking around with the, with the seven other handles on the center strut here, and you'll know which ones will give you the maximum control of the wing. Now, like the Wasp here, you have Y straps. Um, if, your kite has, or if your wing has Y straps, um, feel free to grab onto those. Feel the difference between the center strut handles and the Y straps, um, because the wing is gonna handle different on the water than it is on land. So once you get your tax good and you feel that you can turn the board, it's important that, unfortunately, you can't drive up wind very well with a SUP. But over, once you feel more and more comfortable with your tax, try like leaning against the wing a little bit. If you have proper wind, um, you should be able to get the board on angle a little bit. Because on foil, if you watch some of these guys ride that are very good, um, you'll see that the foil is actually on angle pulling against the wing um, which creates a little bit of apparent wind and keeps the wing nice and powered. Um, obviously on a SUP, you don't want to lean it too far, otherwise you're going to tip over. But once you start feeling comfortable with your tacks, um, you can certainly try leaning against your wing um, as it will get you ready for that foil. If everything I mentioned in this video, you can master, you're most certainly ready to hop on your wing foiling board and start trying to wing. Now obviously, an 11 foot SUP is gonna be different than a six foot, very thick wing foiling board. However, a lot of the principles are gonna be the same and it is much easier to transfer from a stand up paddle board to a wing foiling board than it is to go straight from the ground, you know, a beach, soccer field, backyard, whatever, to a wing foiling board is a much bigger transition than going from the ground to a stand up paddle board to a wing foiling board. If you haven't learned to foil yet, before you make that jump to a wing foiling board, 
I would recommend that you find someone with a boat or a jet ski, get up on your foil, learn how to ride it behind a boat with, with proper power, consistent power, and learn how to ride your foil before you hop right to the wing. Because learning how to foil with a wing is almost impossible. Some people have done it, um, but it's very challenging. So we recommend that you get on a boat, learn how to ride your foil before you go out with your wing foiling setup. As always, you can call the shop if you have any further questions. This has been Cole from Mack Kite Boarding.